Hi folks! In this video we'll be looking at the standard matrix of linear transformation. <clears throat> at this point you guys have already seen several examples of linear transformations from both a um, the definition of transformation and from a few matrix examples, seeing them acting on vectors, but we're going to look at both geometrically what's happening when you perform a linear transformation and how do you go about computing the matrix if you know where it's sending your standard basis vectors. Um, I've also linked in Blackboard for you folks several other videos presenting examples of linear transformations along with some other explanations of the definitions of one-to-one -one and onto. Um, but in this video I should have examples of all of those concepts available for you. So let's get started. So we have a new version of Maple available on all of the school computers, um, Maple 18, and the new start page that'll open up should have look something like this. So you can actually see there's a nice linear algebra link, um, which I'm going to open in a new tab here, for us to look at um, several different examples from linear algebra and see Maple code um, to just nicely, quickly visualize them. So today we're actually going to be using, in, in this video, um, we're going to be looking at transformation matrices and a little component that we're going to see how this acts on a set of vectors. So as a reminder, um, we've looked at the definition of linear transformation a bit ago. So this idea of um, a transformation satisfies its linear with respect to the sum and scalars commute with the action of our matrix or our linear transformation. So let's look at exactly how the images of our two unit vectors inside, let's say, just R2 for now. Let's look at how um, studying the matrix um, that we have, um, to actually, sorry, to get to our matrix um, that we're interested in, we can just look at where it sends our coordinates 1, 0, and 0, 1. So for the, the matrix with all 1's along the diagonal and 0's elsewhere, this is going to be called our identity matrix. Um, let's look at where this sends the vector 1, 0. And you might be able to, from this, kind of guess where the term identity matrix comes from, from a quick look at its action on a set of vectors. So for this one, you can kind of see zoomed in there, um, it actually sends 1, 0 back to itself. And if we looked at the action of this matrix on the vector 0, 1, we see that this matrix, again, it's called the identity matrix pretty obviously now because it sends elements to their selves, so it's our identity map from R2 to itself. We see that uh, 0, 1 is also sent to 0, 1. If instead of looking at um, the matrix that sends, uh, sends 1, 0, um, and 0, 1 back to themselves, if we changed our, our um, 1 along this axis, we actually get something called a, you know, it's going to be a reflection matrix where we've reflected our y coordinate um, across, across the line x is equal, to, oh, sorry, y is equal to 0. So if we took a, a random vector, let's say maybe 2, 2, 5, we see that this matrix, the matrix 1, negative 1, and zeros along the, the anti-diagonal, um, we see that this matrix reflected it along the line y equals 0. All right, you might notice that I hid our matrix this time, so we're going to just try to look at the image of our vector i, which is this ai, and the image of our vector j, which is this aj, and read off directly from there, once I put the grid lines up, what the coordinates of our matrix of this linear transformation are. So we see that i, which is again, this is the vector 1, 0, after being hit by the matrix, i was sent to the vector 1, 3. So that tells us the first column of our linear transformation is precisely like 1, like 3. The vector of our y coordinate, so this 0, 1, after um, being hit by our linear transformation is sent to 2, negative 1. So the coordinates of our, um, the, the components of our second column are, neg are 2, negative 1. So revealing our matrix, we can see this is exactly what happened. So we're going to be able to, by looking at the image of our two unit vectors, immediately read off what our coordinates of our transformation are. All right, let's look at, um, a, let's actually go back to a matrix similar to the one we looked at when we were visualizing these things in Maple and see how a matrix A 
um, given by 2, 0, 0, negative 1 um, will act on a set of vectors. So note, um, by the, um, what we would expect to have happen is this is going to scale our x-coordinate. So our x-scale factor is going to be positive 2. And our y is going to be scaled by negative 1, which means it'll be reflected um, along this axis. So what this should look like, transforming our unit square by this matrix A, is it'll stretch out our box by a factor of 2 in the x direction and flip our box over by negative 1. All right, a transformation we a transformation we haven't seen yet is something called a shear transformation, where we're actually going to start with a matrix A, and our matrix will, let's leave um, all of our coordinates along the diagonal the same. I'm going to set my coordinate here equal to 0. Let's actually make our upper right coordinate 2. Um, what a shear transformation is going to do is it's going to um, transform our, our unit square to something that looks like this. So it's called a, a shear, since we're shearing off to the right, in this case in the x direction, um, by some multiple of my x coordinate. So I'm going to replace aj by some number of copies of, AJ pl of j plus um, two copies of ai. So these shears, um, there's a joke in your book called a sheared sheep, where you have a picture of a sheep that's gone through this transformation. But shears are, are going to be a nice way for us to combine, uh, to produce new linear transformations. And finally, let's look at rotations. So this is one where I can do it sort of on the fly rather than having to prep it ahead of time. So a rotation matrix, which we'll call A theta. You folks have actually seen this in one of your MATLAB labs, but this will have cosine theta along our diagonals negative sine theta here and sine theta here. Um, what this matrix will do for some theta is it will transform our unit square well it'll rotate it by some angle theta. So for our unit square here, let's actually pull out our, our two coordinates um, out of the way for just a moment while we perform this transformation in notability. What this will do is replace our square by a rotation by some theta. So we'll call these guys a theta. A theta i and let's make this a little more visible a theta j well, let's move that a little closer to where it's supposed to be there we go so this theta um, we can choose whatever theta we need for this matrix. Uh, let's actually look at an example from the practice exam that I gave you and see how we can actually compute from looking at the images of our coordinate basis, our coordinate vectors, um, how we can actually compute what the entries of our matrix are. So looking at this, we can see that um, our matrix, which in this example we're calling T, T acting on I is equal to 0, 2, and t acting on j is equal to, looks like, 3, 0. So immediately we can read off um, t is equal to the coordinate, uh, whatever our image of i is are exactly the entries in our first column, and the image of j are exactly the entries in our second column. So the matrix giving us this particular linear transformation is this guy. 
with all of the matrices we've seen so far, we've actually been looking at maps, um, uh, A or T, whichever we call them, we've been looking at maps from Rn into itself. And we've actually seen special examples where all of the ones we've been looking at were both one-to-one -one and onto. Um, as a reminder, although we've seen this in one other video, um, we say that a map F is one-to-one -one if for all um, X, Y that are inside our domain, um, if the image of F of X is equal to the image of F of Y, then X is equal to Y. Um, we say that a function f is on to if for all, um, let's say, z inside the codomain, which is the set that we're mapping onto, um, there exists some x. Uh, such that f of x is equal to that z. So a picture of something that would be one-to-one um, -one might be the map from, let's say, r2 up to r3, given by um, f of x, y is equal to x plus y, y. So this will look actually very similar to a shear transformation. Um, in that this is exactly that matrix T given by uh, 1, 1, 0, 1. Um, we'll later come back to how we can identify one-to-oneness or onto-ness of matrices, but for now it's enough to just check that given um, a vector of this form, there's a unique vector that it comes from. So this is an example of a map that is one-to-one -one, but not onto as any vector. So what this will look like is uh, x, y, and maybe 0. Actually this was a map from R2 to R2 as initially written. Um, what this will look like is this will map um, the plane. So this f will map our plane to a plane inside R3. So if this was our, our initial plane, here's our image of that plane. And you'll note that from the coordinates here, z is equal to 0. Um, similarly, we can actually find maps that are on to but not one to one. Um, so something like the map um, f from, let's say, r3 down to r2, given by f of x, y, z maps to, um, let's do x plus y, y minus z. So this, there, there by, um, by construction, what this will look like is we'll be mapping from R3, the full set, down to all of R2. And so as, a, as an exercise, try out proving that every single vector in R2 can be hit by a matrix, uh, by an element, um, by an image of one of these x, y, z's. So this is onto, but not one-to-one. -one. All right, next time we're going to be looking at viewing these maps, um, compositions of these maps as matrix multiplication, and in general, look at what it's really going to mean given a map let's say from Rn to Rm, and a map from Rm, oops, that didn't look quite right, <laughs> um, from Rm to say some Rk, um, how can we go about actually constructing the map from Rn to Rk given by the composition of these maps? So we'll go into um, the idea of uh, an entire multiplication on linear uh, on matrices 
that we're going to use to construct such compositions. So see you guys next time.